Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Fox. I'm a member of the Net Capital team. Let's allow one moment for everybody to settle in. Thanks. All right, let's get started. Welcome again. Today, I'm excited to welcome the Hop team. As always, this company is actively raising capital on the Net Capital platform. I just added a link to that into the chat function, um, but you can always go to netcapital.com and search Hop. That's H O P P, or go directly to netcapital.com slash companies slash Hop. Again, that's H O P P. Uh, a few quick housekeeping items. Please do use the Q&A feature built into Zoom. I know there's also a chat function, uh, but the Q&A function really makes it easier for me to track all the questions as they come in and make sure that we get to as many of them as possible. And do ask your questions. The whole goal is for you, a potential investor, to get your questions answered. And we wanna keep this as interactive as possible. So please do engage. Um, with all that being said, please join me in welcoming Fabrice, Antoine, and Eve of the Hop team. Guys, why don't you come on in and tell me a little bit about what you're building with. All right, what's up guys? Um, I'm Antoine Elaine. I'm uh, the original creator of Hop. We're the first social carpooling uh, app and website platform um, in the world. We are doing carpooling ride sharing, um, which is, uh, a similar concept of a really successful company called Blah Blah Car in Europe. Uh, we're adding a social media aspect to it and uh, a different level of comfort and bringing it to the American market. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Absolutely. And so, and so, for those who aren't familiar, um, they, I think they, they understand the concept of ride sharing. I think they understand that it's social, and I think they understand um, that there is uh, kind of a screening element to this, but. So before we get you know deeper into how Hop works, can you tell us like what is the what is the problem uh, that people are experiencing that are using Hop? Well, should I go? Yeah, go for it. I mean, so there's several issues right now for people. Um, one, you know, the cost of long distance travel is pretty high. Uh, we have you know public transportation in the U.S. is inconvenient or unavailable in most places. Um, no apps exist right now that actually match road buddies that Matt, so you're not able to actually find somebody that you want to share a car with. Um, and then, you know, so trust, there's also trust factor, you know, that's always kind of difficult to earn. So we have some elements in there to make people feel, you know, like they can, you know, trust a little more, you know, who they're going to be in that car with. And then, you know, we have air pollution, we have, you know, our planet right now. And so there's, there's so many cars on the road and, you know, 75% or so of commuters are driving alone. <laughs> And, you know, we should be able to consolidate that and, you know, get less cars on the road. Absolutely. And, and so, so what does the hop experience look like from uh, the rider side? And then if you could tell me what it looks like from the driver's side as well, um, and why, and then we'll talk about differentiators down the line, but what is, what does the hop solution look like? Well, as a rider, you'd be looking to go, let's say from uh, Santa Barbara, where we are today, uh, to Los Angeles, uh, let's say LAX airport, um, next week on Wednesday at 3 p.m. You would go on and type in the times and the dates that you are going after having uh, set up your profile and, and given your interest. Um, we give you a list of people from the top to the bottom with the most accurate um, possible ride for you and the most common interests because we match people, drivers and riders based on 
similar interests to provide a better experience, something to something that they can talk about and and you know connect a little further through. Um, some of the uh, interest examples are like surfers with surfers and Dodger fans with, with Dodger fans and people who went to UCSB with people who went to UCSB and, and all that. We have all kinds of different categories. Um, and then you request as a writer, you, re, you, you go through the drivers, you check out profiles, so you check out all the reviews, all the ratings. Um, you request your favorite one um, or your favorite ones. And um, it sends you, it, it's, it sends a request to the driver. The driver checks you out, does the same thing for you and uh, either accepts or rejects it. Um, from there, the chat box opens. You guys, um, you guys talk and, and, and you, you, you are connected now. So you talk and you, you, you say where and when you're gonna meet if there's any details that need to be further spoken of. And then um, you guys meet up at the pickup place you drive to where you're going, you have your, you have your ride, your conversation, you get dropped off. Um, we take care of the whole money transfer and everything. So there's no awkwardness with cash or Venmo or anything like that. It's already taken care of through the app. And um, you go on about your day. Um, there's all kinds of cool features. You, you, you review, you rate, you, you, you comment. And uh, if, uh, if everyone has, if everybody involved in the ride has said that they, uh, they're they willing to have this feature, there's a feature coming called Drop a Heart. And um, if, uh, if one party decides to drop a heart and the other party also drops a heart back, then it's a match and the chat box reopens and they get to continue chatting through the platform. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very interesting. The social piece to it, I think, is, is really exciting. And I, and I want to come back to that. But one part that I think is unique to Hop um, is that these are drivers already going on their trip there's been a lot of concern about Uber and Lyft drivers and other rideshare drivers are constantly just circulating, looking for that next ride. And that actually might not have a positive impact on the environment or on traffic for that, for that matter. But can you, can you go a little deeper? This is, these are not, this is not a career path for, for people. This is individuals already going in one direction and then just supplementing that. Can, can you dig deeper into that? Yeah, the, the people goes anyway when they're going to travel somewhere everybody's traveling somewhere at some point and um, on our side we realize that those cars always drive by one person so there is always this seats empty in cars and um, so that's why we, we took that concept of blah blah car which is a pretty simple simple like uh, just from to where when that's it so we, we add much more feature to make it more interesting more social um, it's like doing Airbnb into your car. You know, you have all these seats. You can just put one seat uh, for someone or two or three, and then um, you know, go go on your on your trip. You know, um, I mean, that's what you want to know, right? Well, and to be yeah. clear, like, and this is like you said, this is not a job. Nobody would make money yeah. doing this. Like, if you're driving for two hours, you would never you would never just sign on and give people a ride to make money because you would lose money that way. The concept is more that you're saving money, you know, and you're you're sharing costs. So you're going there anyways. You're already going to spend forty dollars in gas. You know, you might as well, you know, give somebody else a ride and you know make you know and have them pay you thirty dollars. And a lot of your expenses are already just reimbursed. So yeah, yeah. yeah you'd be going from Santa Barbara area to LAX for about thirty five dollars. It's yeah. uh, thirty five cents a mile. So um, it would make it significantly more affordable than a lot of the uh, like all the other ways that we have out there and also more convenient more and en more enjoyable more just 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 a better experience really a better way to get around for sure when it comes to medium and long distance yeah and i think that's really interesting and more people make that ride than i thought so i am going to circle back to that example in a moment but i certainly understand the the short the medium to long term ride i am a constant orange county to la driver and uh, that that carpool that carpool lane is always looking at me um and so that you know that, that's one more added potential benefit is is just i'm already on my way it would actually speed up my trip if i could go out of my way pick somebody up and get onto the get into the carpool lane but, but i want to circle back for a moment about that social piece and i know there's a social media screen and then there's some social interactions that can happen if the driver and the rider uh, want to go down that route so can one of you tell me about the screen first and then about the engagement once you are connected Thank you. Sure. Um, so what we do is we have the drivers upload their registration 
and their expiration date. And so we cross check, we always make sure that it's, everything's not expired. If something is ever expired, they cannot offer a ride. So we check the registration, their car insurance and their driver's license. And only if all of those are up to date, can they post a ride you know, up to the time that any of those documents expire. And then they can also upload their, um, or they can also put in their Facebook, their Instagram, their Twitter, and yeah, their website. LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they also put on their website. But we, and then we will cross refer to their different social media platforms and confirm that that's actually them. And so where that's really useful is say, you know, I'm going to give a ride to Fab maybe. I can check on Facebook and it's, you know, on his Facebook, I can see, oh, we have, 30 mutual friends. Okay. I feel a little more comfortable with that. So it's just an added layer of, you know, feeling comfortable with who you're at and saying that this is somebody we could be friends with. Yeah. 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 yeah you can yeah. check, check the, 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 the person on both ways. So I think it, it makes, it makes the things more, especially here, you know, like in, in France, I don't think people really um, use much um, the social media, like here in this country. That's why we, we took that concept and really add a lot of, um, component with uh, you know the a woman only also button like and a men only button which is some men or some women won't, would feel more comfortable just with someone from on, on their gender side and so we, we put that too and so yeah you have to check it out yeah. and uh, sign up and next you're going to see all these little uh, you know feature you know, that we have implemented yeah, yeah. Not only the security features around knowing who you're riding with, which is a, a unique twist on ride sharing, uh, but also being able to you know determine which features matter to you. I see uh, bike racks, ski racks. I also see music or no music. I see smoking or non-smoking. Um, all these things can can really influence your ride, especially when you're talking about these medium to long distances. If you're going down the street, maybe that's less important. But if you're sharing a ride for 200 miles. Might, might want to know that they're going to smoke the whole way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I'm circling back to the problem for a second. I know we glanced over it, but it's, it's worth circling back to. Um, on average, 18 days out of the year, Americans spend driving. Um, that accounts for about 10,000 pounds of carbon dioxide um, and 550 gallons of gasoline. Can, can you guys talk about why it's so important to shift the framework around ride sharing from cars sitting on the roads hoping for rides to I'm already going there. Let's actually do what the carpool lane was designed for, which is encourage people to get off the roads and into one car. What, 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 you know, can you talk about the importance of that to, to as a company? First of all, you know your numbers. That's pretty. That's pretty <laughs> impressive. I, 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 see I had some. I had some help. I had some help. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for me as an ex-professional surfer and and still just happy surfer, you know, I, I'm a big fan of nature. I think we're all a big fan of nature because it's the air that we breathe. You know, it's the water we drink and. Uh, I think it's important to give back to it, and I think that with this, we have an opportunity not just to make writing more convenient for people, but we can also invest in the very air that we and our loved ones can breathe, which I think is a huge thing for all of us here. We're in California. We have the mountains. We have the ocean. We've got we've got all this beautiful nature we get to enjoy, and it's def it's definitely going to feel good to to know we're making a difference in that way. And then, like you said, the carpool lane was created for that reason. Um, hopefully we see the skies of Los Angeles look a little clearer uh, thanks to Hop within the next few years. Love, love that message. And, and you also talked about kind of just efficiency. I, you know, I, I, California seems like a perfect target market tip of the sphere here uh, because even that 40 mile journey from Orange County to downtown LA is, it would take hours by public transit. You, you have an example on your offering page, uh, San Francisco to Napa, Napa Valley, not very far. Uh, three and a half miles, three and a half hours of public transit versus an hour and a half in the car. Um, so you really do pick up some some cost savings, but also quite a bit of efficiency um, by by joining by by going through service. Um, I'd yeah. love to circle over for a moment to one more data point about California and why this feels like a good uh, a good application to start. And that is that you, you stare at 44%, about 18 million people of the California residents live on just 233 miles, a 
along the California coast from Ventura to San Diego. I imagine that was a big decision, uh, part of your decision making for starting in California. Um, but also, can you talk about are there other examples like that where it's a dense population across a short, uh, small amount of area that you'd like to go to next after you move on from California? Yeah, I think uh, obviously Florida. Florida, the same, you know, way of the, for the traffic, those three were all along the coast. All the cities are close, but not that close to each other. So the entire, I mean, the, the East Coast is pretty much like that too, you know, like, and, and then the whole Northeast with all these big city at two hours, one hour, two hours and a half of each other. Actually, they can use for sure uh, something like up to, to, to move around and to commute and, uh, and yeah. The, the Texas Triangle also, I think, would be a really mm. good target because mm. there's a lot of commuters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Another big reason why, why California is a great place to start, too, is it's such, a, it's such an adventure state. You know, people, people love adventuring around here. People are always, a lot of people are going a lot of places a lot of the time over here. So All the park, all the lake, mm -hmm. the beach, the mountain, the snow in winter. Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, our new strategy, yeah. you know, is we're going to start just connecting major metropolitan areas in California, so we can really target our marketing dollars, you know, in certain areas. Because the more people we can get per area, the better the, the app will work. And then, you know, we just work our way up the coast and keep connecting up the coast, and then, you know, we'll work our way in from there. And we count also yeah. on word of mouth, you know, obviously, because when people are going to start to use it, they're going to talk to their friend and say, hey, I just downloaded this app. So cool. I went from San Diego to to Huntington Beach and that was fun. I met that guy. And so so the word of mouth is going to be also a big part of, uh, you know, the, the that marketing, like a natural marketing. Yeah. And, and, and for those who don't know, there are some pretty staggering data around the commutes within California. So I like thinking about the kind of the expansion plan, but I'll bring it back to California for a moment because it really is the perfect test case uh, with poor public transit, a lot of human beings within major metropolitan areas. Um, but 1.6 million daily commutes between Santa Barbara and San Diego, that is not a small distance. No. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And, and I can imagine that uh, people are driving alone on that com commute quite a bit. And can you, so can you talk a little bit about, you know, that is a pretty large distance, but once somebody finds somebody else who's already doing that drive, how does Hop keep them going through the platform? And I know part of what, we, what you guys talk about is that, that discomfort with handling the money. Uh, I'll yeah. pay you next time. Uh, oh, how much is it actually worth? Can you talk a little bit about why, why going through Hop is still the right answer, even once you find that really cool person who has the same commute as you. I think people, when they're going to start to use the app and they're going to see how easy it is, um, it, and it's kind of a secure, if, if someone, if the friends they made a couple rides before, um, they think they're going to be, okay, we'll do it the next, next time together. Yeah, sure. And then that person cannot make it last minute. So they're going to have to go back anyway on the app trying to find someone and it's going to, oh gosh, I'm by myself. The, my new friends mm -hmm. cannot come with me. So I, I think as soon as they start to, to use the app, it's going to be so convenient. No more cash exchange. And, and obviously we're going to lose a little bit of it, like, like maybe Uber and Lyft think about that at the beginning. Oh my gosh, people are going to talk to the driver and then they're going to make plan. It didn't happen because it's, it's too much work on the side of it. It's like calling the guy tomorrow. But so, so I think, I think this app, like so many other apps, it's, it's actually to help people. You know? well, and the driver wouldn't really make any more money if they did it off platform than, than on. The, yeah. the ones that are getting charged the money is the driver. So there's no incentive right. for drivers mm -hmm. to go off platform. Mm -hmm. And if they do, they're the ones that lose because they lose that security of guaranteed payment for the ride that they, you know, that they reserved for their passenger. Yeah. And, so. and it's really rare that everything clicks the same, same time. So like if you're using the, the, if you're using the app hop to get to San Diego, you're going to use it to get other places that okay. you need to get to. And you're going to tell your friends about it. So either way, whether people make great friendships or not, if anything, that's kind of what we're out there for to connect people while they go places. So if we did that, then that's great. And I know you're going to talk about how you guys met on Hop and you're going to, your people, your friends are going to be like, what is that? Oh, I want to try that. That sounds like a great idea. That's how it blew up in Europe. And 
that's how it'll blow up over here yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that makes I think that makes a bunch of sense. And then also I imagine over time, you know, the value of that, the extra couple bucks maybe, which doesn't seem like it's even there, but the, the value of going off site also might be decreased by it's one less ride, it's one less data points, one less review. And I imagine over time people will be determining you know who they ride with based off of these indicators. So it might be worthwhile keeping it in the platform. Um a couple more data before we go into the revenue model and look at time. The 2.65 million daily commutes in the Bay Area, uh, only 9.4% of these commutes are already carpool. 76.4% are like all of the rest of us driving alone to their destination. Shame on us. Um, but there's a whole other target market that I hadn't thought about that you guys are clearly thinking about, and that is the music festival scene. I know things are opening back up, God willing. Um, 32 million people go to music festivals every year, and the average Miles commute traveled is 903 miles. How did you, what made you guys even think about that data point? And then how do you how do you imagine integrating more closely with these hosts of the festivals down the line? So concerning the the music festival, instead to go from the bottom and try to target all the the people go to festival, we have this possibility to to have an API of the app. So we want to go to above and actually there is like three big trade show with uh, all the, the festival, uh, different festival of music is 800 something festival per year. So it's, it's, it's a lot uh, in this country. And we're going to offer um, deals with those festival, you know, like, hey, you know, you have problem of parking traffic to get to your, to your concert and to your festival. Here is the uh, next into your website, next to the button to buy the, the ticket, you can have that button to, to that button also to, to be able to offer carpooling for people with hub. So that, that could be one obviously um, um, possibility to, to go through. And uh, we actually have one of these um, uh, trade show or is here in Santa Barbara. So we are lucky. And then another one on the East Coast and one in Las Vegas. And so um, it's in November. But obviously, the, the groundwork um, for all the, 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 the people who love music and go to festival, we're going to do it uh, both way, to, from the top and from the bottom, to make sure everybody knows about um, Hop, to go to Coachella, to go to any festival, rock, punk, electronic music, anything. And to be clear, too, you know, we want to have tents, like canopy tents at these festivals, too, yeah. so yeah. we can actually, in person, get to know people and... We know that's so important for branding as well, you know, because that really is our target market. You know, it's going to be a lot of people in their 20s and 30s. I think that's it's just going to be a major part of it. So, yeah. So We don't just want to have a really strong online marketing strategy. We we really want to we really we really want to have um, a strong offline one, too, where we're out there face to face with everyone talking yeah. with people. Yeah. yeah. And the second to that is the college university. Mm -hmm. So all the college university is going to know about up at some point. We're going to target all the Facebook group because they always have something carpooling, ride sharing inside those college university. It's always very clunky and not secure. Everybody jump in cars to someone they don't know. There is also the, the, the great list carpool things, which is kind of like scary to me. And so the, we have a lot to target marketing wise, like uh, for sure, offline, online, be on site on college with uh, ambassador. Um, I know we have our team also with marketing, like to talk about that and having like a booth on every school at some point at the start of the year and offering up and how we how use it and download the, the app, you know, so. I've seen many a great company expand out of college campuses, leveraging those relationships and those networks. <laughs> Well, I, I love to hear about that piece of the strategy. I know uh, one of your team members and owners and investors, Matt Barnes, uh, former UCLA grad and NBA champion, has discussed um, how he would have loved to have seen this during his time at UCLA. I think his quote is, if they had this when I went to UCLA, I would have gone home every weekend. I'm honored to be a part of that. So I definitely imagine, similar to his sentiment, that if there's an opportunity, and he lived, you know, grew up in the Bay Area, that LA to Bay Area trip, I, I did that trip many times when I lived in the Bay Area, coming back down to visit my family, those seven hours can, can be particularly long. Fortunately, I never had to do it alone. Um, uh, but I think, I think the college campus application is a very, very important one. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
for those who are unfamiliar about the dramatic cost savings, let's talk about the revenue model for a moment. How much do you imagine the, the average ride would cost? And then uh, I know I already named names of other carpool providers, other ride share providers, but of the other service provider offerings in the space, you know, what, how, did, how does that line up with the, with the top service offering from a price standpoint? Yes, yeah, so um, like I said, so coming from Santa Barbara to Los Angeles, you know, that's about an hour and a half to two hour ride. 100 miles. And about 100 miles, you know, that would cost about 30 to $35. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's one person, if it's, if it's more people it will be less because we cap out drivers with how much money they can make on the ride, because we don't want them to actually make money. They're not, this is not supposed to be a profitable, <laughs> a profitable, uh, journey for them. It's supposed to be more of a reimbursement. So, so, so that's, um, about 30, $35. And what we take is we take a tiered platform fee. It starts at 299 and it goes up to 699 max. And depending on how long of a trip it is mm -hmm. and so that's our revenue model that you know for our platform fee and everything else behind the scenes mm -hmm. yep uh, i can't hear you uh, are you muted classic classic yeah. I've, I've honestly probably gone several weeks without doing that and i was getting pretty proud of myself and that's what i did <laughs> um, so i was muted um no that's that's great uh, that that seems um like a reasonable price for, for comparison standpoint, we don't have to name names, but let's say another rideshare alternative, what does a hundred miles uh, from them look like? Well, then 170 to $190. Well, was that out? Is it? Yeah. No, yeah. no, like no it's probably more. even more. The prices vary quite a bit depending mm -hmm. on what the market's doing, but it's definitely always around uh, be between 160 and 220, yeah. $230, yeah. Yeah. So we're yeah. going for something more like in the thirty-five dollars range for hundred equals of thirty-five cents. And because the driver is already going that way anyway, he's not yeah. he's not going yeah. to make money. And he, you know, it's 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 ride sharing. It's it's literally sharing a ride together, like Airbnb in your car. Yep. Exactly. Very cool. No, that that's a that's a good uh, that's a good differentiator. Um, before I go to the market size, time flies, and you're having fun. We're about the halfway mark. Uh, of our scheduled programming. So I wanna remind our participants, please do continue to ask your questions in the Q&A feature built into Zoom. Um, and of course, you can go directly to netcapital.com slash companies slash hop, that's H-O-P-P, -P, or go to netcapital.com and search hop, H-O-P-P, -P, to see the offering page, learn more, and of course, you can invest um, there. I'm actually gonna throw a curveball here. Before I go into the market size, I realized we haven't talked too much about your guys' backgrounds. Who, who, are, who are you people? What, what, and, and, and how did you get involved with Hop? All right, so I'm Antoine Elaine. I'm 29 years old. I'm from France, Brittany, France. I'm the father of this guy, Fabrice I'm, I'm the father. <laughs> this is, this is my, my father sometimes. This is my son. No, no, um, this is, I'm the son of uh, Fabrice Elaine. Um, we came here when I was 13 years old, um, just wanted to change life up a bit and, and uh, chase this American dream after some, some little bit of family stuff going on over there. Um, I was uh, competitively and professionally surfing uh, until I was about 19, 20 years old. Um, I started making music around that time and uh, recorded my first album called The Life. Uh, I've done quite a few things with music since, a little bit of acting and modeling stuff here and there. And uh, I have jumped into entrepreneurship once I came back from Europe after using BlaBlaCar, the ride sharing system over there. And uh, I came back over here to California and called my dad and I was like, why am I by myself in my car? And and why are, why aren't we doing this over here? And then ooh, I pretty much said, I think we should. And my dad was like, come over and and. I went over there, we started drawing pages. Um, uh, we said, we literally started drawing iPhones on pieces of paper and like, it, it was going to be called magic carpet at first. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and, okay. and then it was going to be called. I, I, I next that when <laughs> I came in. <laughs> he, he wasn't about it, thank God. Right. And then Where it was, you? Thanks. It was going to be called hop drop after that. And then we just simplified it and called it hop H O P P. And we decided to bring Eve in because she is she has a wonderful CPA background. She's entrepreneurial as well. She's got an awesome popcorn company that does really well around here in Santa Barbara. 
And uh, yeah, I feel like now I'm just talking for everybody. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm taking over this whole thing. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much my whole deal here. And I'm proud to be with these, with these two over here making this happen. Absolutely. And Eve, I, you know, your, your background is actually particularly salient um, as an entrepreneur yourself and with your CPA background. Can you, can you shed a little bit more light about um, your background and how you got involved with Hop? Yeah. So yeah, my background, um, I worked as a CPA, you know, studied business economics with an accounting emphasis at UCSB and worked for a couple uh, public accounting firms and, you know, became a CPA. Um, and then after that, actually, funny enough, I took a little gap year myself when I was about his age and I traveled all over Europe. And when I came back from that trip, I had this, I wanted to do the same thing. Blah, blah, car didn't exist at that time in my knowledge, but I was saying, oh my gosh, like we, ha we were driving in this car this entire time and we had two back seats that could have, you know, we could have made like thousands of dollars on that trip. <laughs> and so then I spent the next three months researching it and coming up with a business plan. And then I ended up having to drop it and get back to normal life. But um, so then when he came to me, when they came to me with this, with this idea, they wanted help with the financial plan. I just jumped all over it. You know, I was like, this is my dream. <laughs> this was my dream <laughs> five years ago. And now it's coming. Yeah, I want, I want to be on this. Um, you know, and in the meantime, I, I started a popcorn company called Hippie Pop. You can check it out. H-I-P-P-Y-P-O-P. -P -P, uh, HippiePop.com. Or you can check it out on Amazon as well. It's a vegan popcorn company. We use nutritional yeast and all sorts of organic, you know, spices and herbs and delicious so yeah it's all all, all the breweries and wineries all over town and you know all throughout the country too so yeah very very cool and i'm glad that you shared about that piece as well by hippie pop for those who know serial entrepreneur um excited about the space before you joined um those are all great things and i know you have two other kind of groups that are supporting up uh, um from a from a from a team standpoint so i know octus global i did a phenomenal job building out um, the, the app itself and, and working with you guys to really translate your vision uh, into the final product. Um, and I know the Media 34 team uh, with Ray and Khalid are helping with the marketing and advertising efforts. And those are the same people uh, behind Matt Barnes' All the Smoke um, mm -hmm. production. And so, and they've had some tremendous success with All the Smoke all the way to the point where now Showtime and Showtime Basketball are involved with the All the Smoke team. So they've done so you have, you've been able to build a really strong team around you. Um, and I think that's going to really help help with uh, with the success, ongoing success. Thank Absolutely. You. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's important to note, too, that we've partnered with our app developers. So they are our partners, our CTO. So they have a vested interest in the success of the company as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a really good point, Eve. Thanks. And, and that is great. Um, Doing a long time, I'm glad that, that we needed to do the team part. Usually, I do that earlier. I don't know, but thanks for thanks for rolling with the punches, team. Um, market size now. I think people imagine that it's huge, but it but it, it certainly is. So let's dig into the metrics. Um, how big is the rideshare market? Um, and and and, and you know, how, how how is it growing? What is the, what is the market looking like for this semester? But the market is a. Uh... 280 million people driving cars. So in this country, so there is everybody has a, one car, even more than one car. And, um, and I think for us, the, 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 the biggest work to do, it's really to bring hop to, to, to the here of as much people as we can to, to get the, 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 those driver and make them understanding that, hey, you can save a little bit of money. You can make new friends. Um, you go there anyway, you go to, your, to where you're going anyway. So why not having people coming into your car with you and we make sure we match them with you. Like this, you can have like a nice conversation and, um, and they're gonna save money because it's gonna be cheaper than any other transportation, whatever is bus, train, um, and obviously rentals and all that. So, I mean, that, that's our biggest uh, work It's marketing and putting hop in, in between ears of everybody in this country as much as we can. That's and, the market, you know, like it's, it's huge. And our market is also people, the, the millions and millions of people like, like myself, for example, who, who like to go up and down the, the coast and, and go on surf trips and skate trips and hiking and stuff like that. Um, I know there's just millions and millions of us. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we can really connect people that do this with this, that that's definitely our market is the, the adventure side of, 
of Californians. The travelers, you know, like every weekend we have friends say, I'm going to Big Sur, I'm going, the, I mean, in the desert, the Joshua Tree or, you know, like all this park and then Yosemite or and so, so everybody's going somewhere at some point. Yeah, for sure. So given your exact number, it's hard because it's if it's an untapped market. You know, there's that 280 million drivers, and you know everybody's going somewhere. I mean, I guess some people never leave their their hometown, but most people are they're going places, just traveling or doing doing something. And a lot of them are not carpooling. You know, they're getting there with airplanes or bus or trains or you know by themselves in their car. So that's that huge market that we want to tap into that, you know, that Blah Blah Car has had so much success doing in Europe. You know, we want to do the same thing here in the United mm -hmm. States. And I think Blah Blah Car had such huge success by doing what we are going to do, which is educating people about what it is that we're doing. Once they find out how much sense this makes, it's going to do exactly what it did in Europe. And and, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's going to get, it's going to grow, you know, it's, it's going to grow as a more known thing and, and disrupt the way people go places here. Yeah, and for that market things to compare Europe to, to US, because I always have that question. In Europe, there is a lot of uh, public transportation. From little town to town, it, it's, it's crazy how you can go place to places with, with like a bus and, and tram and subway and different, different level of train. And there, there is a lot of things going on. And Blah Blah Car is still successful. It's very successful. It's in 23 countries. They have 80 million people using it in the entire Europe. And, uh, and here, our public transportation is pretty weak. It's and so it's, 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 yeah, horrible. And so, and so I, think, I think we have a, a very good chance to, to really get into this market. You know, it's not like we have like a four different train who goes different speed and just all over the coast and, and or, or different, you know what I mean? So, so I think we have a big chance in, in this country to be successful with this. Um, this adventure and people are used to the sharing economy now yeah. you know 10 years ago this would have been a wild idea to do in the united states they mm -hmm. would never ever happen mm -hmm. but now i mean who hasn't used airbnb or rented out their room or their whole apartment when they went out of town mm -hmm. you know like who hasn't used uber or lyft a lot of people do that as jobs too you know to make ends meet so it's mm -hmm. this is normal this is normal now mm -hmm. it just it's it all just, set up for us yeah it's the market's ready yeah for us now we really feel like yeah. it Cool, it, sure. it does feel like a particularly good time. Um, and I think especially, you know, I think everybody's noticed it's become harder and harder to find Uber and Lyft drivers uh, post pandemic. Uh, they're, they're, it's, still, it's, still, it's still trying to figure out where they are, but people are driving. Traffic's back in LA. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and, and, and as you mentioned, you know, just a quick trip from Orange County and planning a trip to SoFi Stadium for a football game. I was like, oh, it'll be great. I'll just take, take the bus. You know, and it's, it's less than 40 miles. It's, I think it's like 25, 30 miles, three and a half hours later, including two Ubers, an Uber to the, to the train uh, and, and, and an Uber from the train. So it's like, it feels like there, there has to be an alternative to all that. And then, and, and I see um, Antoine, you want to add something, but just for, for a little bit more context too, you are, you, you mentioned, I think you're absolutely right. You're creating a new market, but the existing ride share market, just purely peer-to-peer -peer existing ride share market is also massive. Uh, looking at about 73 billion in 2020 uh, with the annual growth, cumulative annual growth of 19%, projecting 209 billion uh, by 2026. And so even, even in the current infrastructure as it is, which you guys plan to disrupt, it's still uh, just massive. Um, so I'm going to open it back up. Um, uh, Antoine, you, you wanted to add something there? Oh, yeah. Good, good reading. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I think that right now, especially after the weird year that we've had, the, 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 the weird COVID stuff, and I think people now, especially more than ever, want to connect really bad right now. You know, people have this yearning for human connection, for, for a good conversation. They've been around the same two or three people in the same place in the same town for, yeah. for a year or whatever. And, it, and I think that's another really good thing for Hop right now. Unfortunate that we've been having to go through all this, but it's really good for Hub right now that we be releasing this now because people want to connect. And I think this is a great way to do it while going places. It's the, it's the best two birds, one stone, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we are getting closer to the end of our time here, so I'm giving you guys a heads up. We're going to mm -hmm. end our programming with closing remarks from old school. And so at the very end here, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna ask, I'm going to ask you, why is now the perfect time to join Hop as an investor and a team member by investing through Net Capital? So, 
I'm giving you a heads up. We're not answering that now, uh, but, but that is how we will conclude in the next couple moments. Before we get there, though, you know, we've, I've heard the reference to blah, blah, car. It's always talking about Europe. What does the competitive landscape actually look like? And I imagine it's more indirect competition than anything. I don't think there is an existing platform like this in the States. Um, it feels like it's probably driving yourself or maybe for the longer flight, a longer haul, flying those couple hundred miles instead. But, but what, what do you view as the competitive landscape for Hop? I mean, there's, <laughs> like you said, there's not much good competition, <laughs> you know? Uh, there's, um, there's like way, these ways carpool out there. I don't know if you've ever looked at that. Um, you know, we all have, and I've gone on, you know, it just, it just doesn't. It's, it doesn't work. It's, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to speak badly of them, but um, they, they haven't done it, it doesn't, doesn't compare even close to, to what we're putting out. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. it doesn't look like they've done much marketing or no. even much focusing on that aspect of their company yet anyway. I'm sure if they didn't, it, it would, it would do great, but well, they, they don't, they don't have any no. of the social aspects you know, um, actually, none of them. The user friendliness, uh, yeah, yeah, anything, no, no, yeah. No, even blah blah car, like no, no, no carpooling company in the world has ever done the, the the social thing, the the common interest, the mm -hmm. all those all those cool features that we're adding to it. We're we're just creating pretty much a social platform for people who go places so they can go together. Yeah, that, no, that, that, that is uh, yeah. is interesting because when you look at ways the the way they think about doing carpooling, there is nothing planned before. You go in your car, you use your app Ways, and you say, "Oh, my car is empty," and now I'm going to say, "I'm going to carpool," and you push a button, and then you expect someone jumping on the freeway or in the city you cross to get into your car in the meantime. It's, 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 it doesn't work like that. You have to be prepared about that. You. You post your ride like a couple of days before, day, or a week before if you want. You know you're going to go to San Francisco say, hey, I'm going to see for like four or five days if, if someone com can come with me. So you, it's something like more you plan than you just go like this on, on, on the go. It, it doesn't work like and that. And people you know? love doing that. Like it's, a, it's fun. It's fun being like, ooh, like I, I'm going to see like, I'm going to see if I can have somebody hop in the car with me. Mm -hmm. ha, hop in the car. I'm going to see if we can have somebody hop in the car with me and yeah. and you know, it's exciting. You get that request. You're like, oh, look, I'm taking somebody with me. Like, uh -huh. it's fun. Yeah, it's a fun things to do. Yeah, but besides no, I think... that, I mean, most people, but, but nobody uses it, you know, nobody uses it. That's the point. It's, yeah. it's they, they've kind of created this and it's kind of there, but, um, you know, a lot of people are using like Facebook and Craigslist to find rides. And how hard is it to get one of your, you know, 700 friends you know, like to, to have like an actual matching, you know, ride that they want to go like, like, oh, yeah, I want to go to Palm Springs today, too. That's a pretty small chance. So it's very difficult to find somebody on Facebook and on Craigslist. Oh, my gosh, a friend did that with me like 10 years ago. It was so scary. She, yeah. <laughs> she didn't tell me that this was a Craigslist driver to begin with. Yeah. And a friend was giving somebody was giving a ride. And yeah, I would never do that again yeah. either. That's just that's not comfortable. So, yeah. <laughs> we're just trying to you know make it make it more comfortable and fun for everybody involved yeah yeah uh no no offense but a craigslist driver that feels like a plot for a bad scary movie um <laughs> yeah. a, horror, a horror film um yeah, yeah. But, you know, that, that's a really good sorry for santa barbara every day on craigslist you have between 25 and 40 ads every day just in so, our, just in our little town. Just here, just here yeah. in, in Golita, yeah. Santa, the, our area. So this is also at one of our, our target. For sure, we need to give that link of hop to all these people, mm -hmm. for sure. Make them like more comfortable. You know, they go anywhere. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, yeah. The Santa Barbara to, to LA model, the, I think the Orange County to San Diego, it's really just like kind of that finite couple hundred miles or a hundred or so miles that, that just, you know, it, you know and, and, and the prepared part is something that you mentioned. I think makes a lot of sense in that regard, especially if you're going from Southern California to Northern California or something like that, you, you, you know, you know, when that's happening, we didn't just jump in our trip to Big Sur, we, we planned it out. Um, yeah. And so I imagine, so let's talk about the indirect competition for a little bit. For, for the person who's thinking, I'll just Uber to LAX, LAX to SFO, and then Uber to my hotel. What is the pitch uh, that they should hop instead? Well, um... For the simple fact that that's going to be way more expensive, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to pay, you're going to pay 
three, four, three, five, you're six. gonna pay four or five times <laughs> more than than you would with us. That that should do it already. And also, um, your driver is gonna be somebody that you checked out and that 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 we we matched you up carefully mm-hmm. and 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 made sure that that you you're not getting a, a random person and that you're gonna be able to have a conversation if you'd like. And if you don't, mm-hmm. you don't. You know you. But um, we'll we'll make sure that you have a way cheaper. <laughs> way better experience yeah you, know? you don't get to pick your uber driver yeah we're no. we're, pretty much, we're pretty much giving you a better experience for a much more affordable price so i don't know i don't know what more you want well <laughs> yeah. and it's, little, it's more reliable as well you know because if you want to try to take an uber ride you know then sometimes they don't want to take you you know they, they get it and they don't want to take you you can you can spend quite a long time yeah. trying to keep booking rides until you're that right until you your know. driver oh, you'll miss your will finally yeah. take you because they don't want to drive two hours away and then have to drive two hours back no, you know it's you. not a win for them either it's a lose lose because then you have to drive so, back by yourself yeah 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 so so this way you know i mean the driver's going there anyways you know they're they're committed to this ride so i think it's going to be a lot more reliable and you'll you know? have someone on the drive back too because remember every time you go somewhere you got to go back home <laughs> <That's it. laughs> no, I- I think that I think that's exactly right, um, and then of course not to mention the environmental impact that you save as well. Um, Ordering those short flights, I think, is going to be less and less palatable from an environmental standpoint. Um, you know, in, in the interest of time, I I'm, I think I'm probably going to breeze right past this next question, but I always like to ask it. You know, uh, defensibility, intellectual property, or defensibility. I understand there are there, there are competitors in Europe um, like competition here in the United States. This is software, so you know less protectable than other uh, than other types of of, of, uh, of companies. But can you talk about you know what is the moat or, or defensibility that would keep other play- players out of this space, or is the plan to just go out there, market share, and outcompete? Um, all, all good answers. Yeah, you know, I mean, we have our trademark at least, but um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, we we spoken with some patent lawyers, and we could try to patent, you know, a couple of features, um, you know, and it might have a little defense, but there, there's always workarounds, you know. Other competitors can always come in and just kind of tweak it a little bit, and there you go, you just lost your patent. So, you know, you just spent a lot of money creating it and trying to defend it. So, so yeah, you know, we'll try to <laughs> we can patent a few little things, mm-hmm. but. Um, you know, as we're getting this out on the market, but yeah, that's yep. where we just good old fashioned market share and out compete. Ne- never a bad answer. Um, the first. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, and on, on that note, very excited to kind of bring us home before I transition to closing remarks. Um, you know, as we discussed earlier, you know, Matt Barnes is one of your investors and advisors and supporters. Um, I know he's, you know, you guys have discussed in, in the process of sharing more broadly with his network about this, uh, about this opportunity, but he's very excited about it. And I think that's one of the things that also makes this platform more defensible is that type of high level support from such an influential person. So that's very exciting. Congratulations on, on uh, getting, getting him excited enough to join in on your company. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. We're really excited to have him on board. We're really excited yeah. as well, for sure. Yeah. Um, let, let's bring it home here. So, 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 team, I, you know, I, I dropped the spoiler earlier. Why is now the perfect time to go to netcapital.com and invest in Hop? Well, because you'll be investing in a team of great people that are working towards a greater future. Uh, you'd be a part of the beginning of a new era for going places. Um, it would be a smart financial uh, investment and, and you'd be part of a big movement and part of our family, which is a tight one. Um, and uh, yeah, you'd be part of a great of a great story. Well, this, I say this is really your chance to get in. This is the one chance to get in because, you know, this is not a publicly traded company and we probably will be going IPO for quite a while. So if you actually want to have a piece of hop like with net capital, this is really your chance because after this, it's going to be private investors, you know, that are investing really, really large chunks of money and it just won't be, you know, possible for the general public. Yeah. Yep. So thanks to net capital, uh, actually to have our friends be able to invest, you know, 500, $1,000, you know, it's, it's, 
it's good to see what's going to happen in, mm -hmm. in five years from now with uh, these people who, who get the, f the first little money in, in with us, you know. So. Yeah, it's amazing to be able to give the opportunity to the people that are close to us in, in our friend groups and in our families to, to be able to hop into to this adventure with us. And uh, it really makes it feel like home. Um, yeah, thanks to Net Capital for sure. Well, I, I could speak for the entire Net Capital team and say it's been a pleasure working with you all. I'm grateful to have Op and you guys as supporters of the company. And it's been great to be able to allow that opportunity for, for your friends and family, your community groups, and our investor base. So it's been exciting to see them join in. And, and I wish you continued success. So with all that being said, thank you so much for everybody joining. Thank you for the participants and your thoughtful questions. Um, as always, this has been recorded and will be uploaded to the Net Capital YouTube account. I've just added the link to that into the chat feature. Uh, please do go ahead and go back if you missed anything. Um, and of course, share that link with anybody that you think uh, would be interested in potentially investing or learning more uh, that might have missed this, uh, this webinar. Uh, with all that being said, uh, please join me in thanking these panelists. Thank you so much. Uh, Fab, Antoine, Eve, always good hanging out with you all. And uh, for everybody else, please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Take care. Thanks, Thank Eric. You. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.